Welcome to the Dark Side. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Elena. And today we are going to be talking about the dark side of the plant hobby. And yes, there is a dark side to that beautiful, rewarding hobby and its pests. Those annoying, creepy, crawly, makes my skin crawl and makes me itch pests. At some point with this hobby, we all have to deal with those annoying, nasty pests. It doesn't matter if you have just a few plants or a lot of plants, that's just the way it is. So since we are in the fall and it is time to start over watering your plants, please don't do that. In today's video, we are going to talk about fungus nets, spider mites, mealybugs, and thrips. Those are the past that I had to deal with personally, and I would like to share remedies that I use for those issues and they seem to work for me. Let's start off with fungus gnats. So that's the first annoying pests you are going to have in the fall. Since the season is changing, it's not as warm, it's not as sunny. A lot of plants do go dormant so they don't grow as fast, so naturally they don't need as much water. But a lot of us are still sticking to the same schedule that they had over spring and summer, and that's how we tend to overwater our plants. First tip for fungus nets I have for you is really eyeball your plants to make sure you're not overwatering. Really stick your finger in there, get a moisture meter if that helps. Feel the leaves on the plant and see if they're softer, then you water them. If not, back off, give it a few extra few days. That's the best way to really avoid the fungus net situation. And if it's too late, and if you already got fungus nets, you guys, there's a few things I can recommend. Stop overwatering because that's the best environment for them. They love to, to live in that one inch of very wet soil and they multiply so fast. Although they are not as damaging to plants as some other pests, they are annoying, very, very annoying. <laughs> and you can get so many of them in such a short period of time, it's unbelievable. Second thing is, I think it's pretty important when you buy a bag of soil, make sure you dry it out. I like to keep my soil in a container that's already ready for me to use. So what I did when I purchased the soil for basically stuck up for fall and winter, I put it in the container and I put it outside when it was still sunny and warm, I put it outside and just let it sit there and let it dry out because a lot of times we do get nets that come in the soil or eggs and we don't see them right away. And once we pot the plant up and you start watering, here we go, here they, here they come. And another thing I start doing for that is I've been using this systemic house plant uh, insect control product. I put it in my whole container of soil and I mixed it up and there is on the bag, there is instructions and the uh, measurements for different size of containers. So I put a lot in there and I mixed it all up. And basically now when I pot up my plants, it's gonna have this insect control systemic product in there. And what happens is once you start watering your plants with this product in it, it becomes toxic to the pests. So basically it's like poisoned apple for those pests. So anytime they have a bite of it, they will die. So that's pretty incredible product. It does work for fungus nets, but it takes a little while obviously for it to start working. So what I did, I just put in the plants that I already have potted up. I put a little bit around it and I just, with the stick, I just kind of pushed it the farther into the soil and um, then I watered my plants. And it does work, but it takes a little bit of time. It takes time for a plant to absorb the product. It takes time for the soil to get saturated with this product. So definitely be patient on that. So in the meantime, while I was waiting for this product to kick in, um, I would definitely always have this guys, this sticky little trap. While I was waiting for this product to work, which is, did took about a week, 
um, at least the sticky traps will start catching mature nets which is really good so at least it catches some of them so they don't reproduce at least for you and and then this product kicks in and basically over time you won't have it and this is a long-term solution which is i really like another thing that i really like to use in my girl cabinet actually for a nets and it's a butterwort plant so it looks like this it's very tiny it's kind of sticky and you do see dead nuts on it because it's a carnivorous plant and that's what it does it basically attracts all those little nets and they fly up to it and they stick to it and basically plant consumes it this one i like to keep in my grow cabinet because it does like a lot of humidity and it does like a lot of light and it works pretty well for me let's move on to spider mites now oh my gosh you guys spider mites i absolutely cannot stand spider mites those are they are very damaging and they are so hard to see and i gotta tell you i lost over the years so many plants to spider mites it doesn't matter what you do how you take care of it rinse it off and all that stuff with spray products they just keep coming back out of nowhere i swear to god i lost every single citrus tree i've tried to grow for past 15 years to spider mites they are so frustrating so what i use for spider mites there's two products there is ins insecticidal soap that I like to use for that and a Captain Jack's dead bug spray. So this stuff is pretty serious stuff and it does work and it works pretty fast, but spider mites, they just keep coming back. And, and I gotta tell you, I have zero tolerance for spider mites. Like I'm so frustrated with those little bastards that I just literally would do the treatment like one time and after that, I just chopped the whole plant down. I really do. I just don't have it in me anymore to fight those guys. They are so annoying. And most of the time I struggle with them during the winter when the heat is on and your house becomes more dry. That's when you get them the most in my experience. And one of the examples of chopping plants down is my Syngonium right here. It was damaged by spider mites pretty bad and um, I had no tolerance and minding it happened maybe not even two months ago. I was so frustrated. I treated once and then I saw them again. So I chopped this plant, believe it or not, to nothing. It literally was just stumps. I cut it right to the node and I literally chopped every single leaf off because it looked horrible and um, and I was done fighting with spider mites. And I was surprised in about a month and a half how fast this plant regrew almost immediately. Like, this is crazy. This is definitely survivor right there. So that's how I deal with spider mites. That's all I really can tell you on them. That's the best way I really found to deal with them. So let's talk mealybugs. Oh my gosh, those make me itch. They are, I wouldn't say they are as destructive as spider mites. They're slow, they barely move. They will not really horribly damage your plant too fast and they are easy to get rid of, but man, those make me itch. In fact, there is one video I have, which I don't even remember which one, it's an old video. I was itching in it the whole time and my dad after he watched it he's like why are you itching the whole time in your video this is not good and i'm like because i was dealing with mealy bugs prior to filming i can't they make me itch you guys they drive me absolutely insane and it's so crazy because they are kind of not as harmful as some other pests I just can't stand them. I really cannot stand them. They're so frustrating to me. And it's crazy because if you think about it, that fuzzy white stuff on them, that's actually sugar. So they're making sugar for their best friends ants and it's kind of cute, right? No, so frustrating, so annoying. They make me itch, I don't like them. Obviously all the products that I showed you before, they do work for mealybugs. 
but if you don't have a huge infestation of them best way is really alcohol and a q-tip that's the best way to get rid of them what i do is turn the lamp on put the plant under it and go over it and make sure i pick all of them out with alcohol and a q-tip yes it's very tedious it's annoying as hell but it works and they die absolutely immediately obviously if you have a pretty big infestation where it's just too many of them i would definitely use products like that and the last one i would like to talk about is the rips prior to about a month and a half i had never had issue with strips pests that i mentioned before those are the only pests that i ever had to deal with throughout all of these years that i'm growing been growing plants and about a month and a half ago i had a huge huge thrips invasion it was absolutely horrible and my theory on that prior to having a youtube channel i definitely had a little bit more time to clean my plants and wipe them and i did it almost on a weekly basis my plants were always clean and, and pristine and shiny and now it's my life gotten a little busy you guys <laughs> so a lot of times i barely have time to even just water my plants so i haven't been as on top of it like I used to be and and it's so funny because a month and a half ago I was going out of town and I was thinking like you know I never had thrips and I swear to god you guys I manifested thrips <laughs> I wish I could manifest subscribers like this but no just thrips for me when I was leaving I really that 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 like hit me I kind of thought about it and when I came back from my trip you guys I was so shocked I had thrips I had this whole corner right here was basically infested by thrips and those are so horrible that's like by far the worst experience for me than any other pest and so thrips basically they're tiny little bugs you can barely see them they look like an orange little stick to be honest with you so it's very hard to even recognize especially if you never had thrips before and those bastards they they don't they don't fly but they jump and they jump really really far so if one plant has them the whole area will get infested by thrips they are very damaging to the plant absolutely and the worst part about them they lay eggs in a plant leaves which is horrible that means even if you treat it and there but there's eggs in the leaves they're gonna hatch they're gonna come out and here we go again cycle repeats so definitely absolutely absolutely horrible experience i actually when i realized i had thrips i that day i clear the day to just have a day off have a day off from my regular job from youtube and just just have a day off and just have a day for myself and that's when i discovered that i got thrips you guys i spent that day at least 12 hours just treating my plants i would take them outside spray the hell out of them <laughs> and and then go like i would rinse them off with the hose outside let them dry out in the sun and then i would bring them inside a lot of plants i had to cut down like my monstera deliciosa i had it in a pretty large pot it was a pretty sizable plant at this point i had to just cut it down to the nub because the damage was absolutely horrible on the leaves and those leaves were never going to come back to their previous glory so and knowing that thrips lay eggs in the leaves i just chopped it down the whole plant to the nub and it, right now it's kind of regrowing new leaves and obviously they're juvenile leaves so it's, i'm not gonna have any fenestrations anytime soon but if that's the way i could save the plant and um stop infestation it, it, that's the way to go i guess so i have a lot of work and i had a lot of damage and obviously one treatment is not enough you kind of for a while you keep checking on them and if you see it you keep treating 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 for most plants it did work one time and it was enough but it just it's just such a horrible ongoing problem 
that I had to deal with, it's just not worth it. And what I think really happened, I, I bought some plants in, from the big box stores, which, I mean, you can get pests from any store, so it's not like the big box store plants are horrible and they are all infested. No, that's not true. You can buy plant from a nice nursery and um, have an issue. So it was my fault when I brought it home, I kind of isolated, but I didn't really do a good job, I guess. So I put it right here behind me next to my plant shelf. So it wasn't touching any plants. It wasn't really, you know, in my cabinet or whatever, but it was near some other plants and um, yeah, everything, absolutely everything. And don't forget also because they jump and because they're so little, if you tend into some plants that have thrips, it can get on your clothes. It can travel anywhere throughout your house and get all over. Like I this, like I mentioned, this whole corner and the bottom shelf of my cabinet were infested by thrips. I also found them on my kitchen window plants and in my bathrooms. In my bathroom, for instance, there was a lot of my older plants that I had for a long time plants that I, this new plant that I introduced to my home was never ever near to my kitchen or my plants upstairs. And yet I found thrips basically throughout my house. And, um, and the theory is because they jump and they jump pretty far. They do have wings and they just, they just clap them and they jump. <laughs> so, and the theory is it's, that's how they spread. I mean, they get on, on your clothes or whatever and you, or on your hands and you touch another plant and, or get near another plant and you're gonna have a huge infestation. Absolutely horrible, horrible experience, you guys. I definitely don't recommend. So definitely, definitely make sure you clean your plants once they arrive to your home and definitely isolate them because it is not worth it, I can promise you. And although all these products that I've mentioned before, they work very well, they really do. But one thing you have to keep in mind, sometimes not all of the plants are okay with the treatment. Some plants, what I found myself, once I spray them and rinse them off and all that stuff, they would come back to life and looked amazing next day. And some plants really, really did not. Some plants really don't react well to those chemicals. Yes, the, the pests are gone, but also it can actually burn leaves on your plants. Like for instance, let me show you my bonsai tree, which I'm kind of bummed out about it because that was first plant. My husband and my son bought it for me together and I have it I have this bonsai for about three years now but it burned the hell out of it I mean it just literally one treatment with the Captain Jack spray completely fried this plant and um it was much it was a lot more fried branches there I just trimmed some off yesterday and I hope it's not dead completely We'll see, I guess, but I'm going to have to kind of wait and see. I just I just cut it back. My little tree is not wasting its energy on those dead branches and see if it comes back. I don't know, I guess we'll find out, but that's my little, hopefully not completely dead bonsai that I can bring it back to life. So definitely be aware by treating your plants that some plants will drop leaves some plants will get burned and um, so definitely keep that in mind. My other bonsai tree that did not do well with that is this one right here. I had a little elephant here. I have this bonsai tree for about five and a half years now. My son and I, we bought it together at the big box store like so long ago. And I absolutely adore this tree. It's actually blooms for me. Um, there's a little bloom too right here that's coming. There's gonna be a little bloom right here and there's a little bloom right here. This tree, believe it or not, about a month and a half ago, it was completely bare. All of the leaves were gone because the minute I sprayed this tree with the spray, it dried up and dropped all of the leaves. And this one came back 
So I really do have hope for my other bonsai to come back to life, I'll see, but it's gonna be a very, very slow process because that one grows very, very slow. So absolutely keep that in mind. And let me show you my other plant that's really, really, so you can see the damage from the thrips. It is my newest leaf on my alocasia black velvet. And I don't know if you guys can see, but all those little dots right there, that's definitely a thrips damage right there. And I really hope because I didn't cut off those leaves. So I kind of left them and I am watching this plant very, very closely because like I said, they do, they do lay eggs in those leaves and you might get infestation again once those little bastards hatch. So these are basically products that I really like to use, like insecticidal soap. I love using it before I bring the plants in into my home and really clean them up, especially the ones that I was growing outside for the summer. This works basically for anything. This product is absolutely amazing. Captain Jack's, I highly recommend it. And I will link all the products below for you guys, just in case if you are having issues and looking for some products. So this is absolutely amazing. It, and it does work on spider mites really, really good. And this guy it just goes in the soil. This is absolutely, this. I really enjoy this product. Uh, keep in mind, it's it says right here, it protects plants from damaging insects for up to two months. So every couple of months, you're gonna have to kind of put a little bit more. Always make sure you have alcohol at your home and sticky traps. Those guys are pretty, pretty amazing. So all those pests, they are annoying, they are frustrating. Once you have them, gosh, you're gonna spend hours and hours and hours trying to get rid of them. It's very, very, it's a lot of work, you guys. And you would think that day when I was working for 12 hours trying to wash all of my plants off and treat every plant that I have, and uh, you would think I have learned my lesson and maybe not bring a new plant for a little while. You guys, it was so funny. In the middle of the day, halfway through my treatment, I ran out of products and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to go get products. I need to finish this job. So I went to, I believe it was Lowe's and um, and I was buying all these bottles of stuff and, and I never grab a cart. I don't know why, I just never do. And while I was holding all of these products in my hands and I didn't have any room to grab anything else, I stumbled on this guy and you guys already have seen it. So I stumbled on my Miranda lemon lime and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to bring this guy home. So I'm literally like dropping everything, dropping bottles and drop it. Like it was, it was hilarious because as I am literally so exhausted and I've been trading my plants for thrips for like the whole day and I'm st I still came home with the plant. So I guess the best way to really deal with all of that, just, just make sure anytime you introduce a new plant home, just make sure you clean them off, isolate for at least two weeks from other plants. And, um, and some of them I would recommend to repot. I personally like to acclimate my plants for a couple of weeks before I move it to a new soil, a new pot but sometimes just check the soil if you see anything, I mean, absolutely anything suspicious, repot it right away. That's, that's what I would do because it is so not worth it. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope this video was very helpful. I hope none of you will ever, ever go through what I had to go through because it is absolutely terrible. And I would definitely recommend all of those products. It is not a sponsored video. These are the products I use. And there is a lot of other products on the market out there that works for all of these past issues. I just try to keep things simple. I don't necessarily want to have too much stuff. and. Um, I just stick to those few because they work and that's all I really need to combat my issues. And obviously if you do have better remedies that works better than these products right here, definitely let me know. We all have our own ways of dealing with 
pests any suggestions all these welcomes if you guys enjoy plant videos and if you want to see more of my videos make sure to subscribe to my channel like and share my my videos with your plant friends and if you want to check out more of my videos definitely check them out right here right here and right here i will see you guys in those videos if not i will see you guys next monday thank you so much for watching i will see you very soon bye